Welcome to Inheritance and Super in Python. My name is Chris, and I will be your guide. This course is split up into three lessons. The first lesson talks about inheritance and objects and classes in Python, and quickly shows you how to use the super function to get at the parent attributes and methods in inheritance. The second and third lessons talk about single and multiple inheritance and how to use super to get at those objects as well. First off, a quick warning. The syntax for inheritance has changed between Python 2 and Python 3. All the examples I'll be using in this course will be based on Python 3. So let's get started. In this lesson, I'll be talking about classes and objects, when to use them, why, and how. So what is an object? An object is just a way of grouping data and methods together, usually for things that belong together and help you organize your code. Frequently, an object maps to something in the real world. If you're writing software that describes a class schedule, you might have a person object with a name and an address attribute and methods on that for adding that person to a course or saving their data. Similarly, if you were writing accounting software, your balance sheet object might have a list of assets and a list of liabilities as the attributes, and a method for totaling the assets or taking a report. A class defines how to make an object, and is actually in Python how you create the object itself, which is called instantiation. I'm going to start with some examples that are based on geometric shapes. If you're coding along with me, I'm putting it inside of a file called shapes.py. This is the simplest possible class. It's two lines. It starts with the keyword class and the name of the class square. By convention in Python, you always capitalize the name of your class. The pass keyword tells Python that there's nothing else in this class besides an empty definition. If you open up a REPL and import the square class from the shapes, you can then instantiate it by calling it. The square on the right hand side, capital S, is my class. I call it using the parentheses and I end up with an object that I've named square. I can now add attributes to that square, maybe a length of three, and I can examine that square by using the built-in function called dir. There's a lot of content here. Don't worry about it too much. There's just two things I wanna point out. On the bottom right hand side, you'll notice length. When I added the length attribute to square, dir shows that it's there. In the top left, there's a special method, double underscore class, that contains information about the class the object came from. If I look at that now in the REPL, it produces a class object that says this is a square. You can always figure out what class an object comes from by examining this property. Now I wanna add some complexity to the square. First off, You'll recall, I added an attribute length. Well, the square without a length isn't useful, so I want to make sure that a length is always there. You can do this by changing the constructor. The constructor in Python is called double underscore init. This method gets called every time a class constructs an object. The default one doesn't take any parameters. I've changed this one to take a parameter called length. I then store that on the object itself that gets created from the class. Now it won't be possible to create a square without a length being defined and that attribute stored on the object. In addition to storing the length, I've also defined two methods, an area and a perimeter. These return the area and perimeter of the square itself by doing math on the length. You can see this inside of the REPL importing from square like before. Now I'm passing in the length of three as part of the constructor. I get my length, it returns a value three. I can call the area method, I get three times three is nine. And once again, I can look at dir to examine the object. In addition to having the class as before, on the bottom right side now, you can see area, length, and perimeter the methods and attributes that were defined in the class. Great, so I've got my square. Now I wanna add another shape. This time it's a rectangle. This is going to be very similar to my square. Instead of needing a length on its own, I need a length and a width. Like before, I use the double underscore init method to pass in those as parameters and save them on the object. And also like before, I have area and perimeter methods to do the calculations based on the length and width of the rectangle. Once again, import it from the REPL. 
passing in a length and a width, and I get the expected result. The two classes I've defined so far, the square and the rectangle, are very, very similar. This is a problem. If it turns out there was a bug in the area method of one, because I duplicated in the other, I probably have to fix it in two places. One of the ways of simplifying this is by using inheritance. Instead of defining the square and the rectangle separately, I'm going to define the square based on the rectangle, replacing the code you see here with the new code at the bottom. In this case, square, having rectangle in brackets, inherits from the rectangle object. I don't have to define anything new on it. It will inherit anything that I don't override from the rectangle. The init method does need to be overridden. The rectangle takes a length and a width. The square only takes a length, so I need to redefine this method. This is where super comes in. Super allows me to access the parent's methods. In this case, the parent rectangle's init method, and I'm going to pass in a length for the rectangle's length and width. I don't have to specify anything else. The area and perimeter will now come from the rectangle class from before. Inside of shapes.py, I've replaced the old square definition with this new inherited code. Like before, I can use the REPL and import the square, instantiate it with a length of three. If I look at the class, not surprisingly, it's a square. If I look at the dir of the object, you'll see a few new things. For starters, at the bottom, the width, perimeter, length, and area are all there. The area, perimeter, and width are inherited from the rectangle class. The length is passed in in the constructor. I can also look at the bases attribute of the class attribute. This can tell you where your inheritance is from. Because square inherits from rectangle, the bases value shows the rectangle class. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to use super to look at different methods and attributes inside of single inheritance.